priming the mind to me is just like, I mean, that's so, so important. Like now I can think straight. Now I um, am, you know, really, really focused on my, my goals for the day. And, um, and I just, I'm just going to be much more clear and, and get, get more things accomplished. Let's learn how our next guest gets up, dress up and show up on purpose. Enjoy the episode. Hello, morning enthusiasts. Welcome to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lumid. And today, you know what? I have another hypnotherapist on the show, and I am honored to bring her on because she has been working years um, in helping people live in their freedom, in their liberty. Her name is Victoria Gallagher. She is a worldwide, worldwide leader in hypnotherapy, a best-selling author. She has dedicated her life to empower people all over the world to successfully live their life um, through liberty, aligned with their dreams. And she does that through her meditative recordings and her online courses. She has a podcast, The Power of Your Mind, where she talks about her passion for inspiring leaders to influence using influential guests. And we talk about all they think they talk about all things habits, discipline, self-development, mindset. And it's right in alignment with what we do here at Best Morning Routine. We love all things habits and principles. So with no further ado, Victoria, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's it's a privilege. And uh, this is definitely one of my favorite topics because I, I truly believe that, you know, having a morning routine, being connected to sort of like a ritual, something that, you know, your mind can, uh, you know, you, you can expand your mind and expand your awareness each and every day, exercising mm -hmm. ourselves uh, to be disciplined, be consistent, um, all of that. It really, really sets you up to have the best life, the best day, uh, the best year, the best of everything. Yeah, I agree. It sets the tone, honestly. And, you know, we first set our habits and then because we're habitual creatures and live 95% of the subconscious mind, and I know we're going to talk about that a bit more, we, when we make our habits, then our habits make us because then they move to that habitual mind. So I'm, I'm really thrilled to dive into the subconscious mind and how the power of habits play a role there. But before we do, Victoria, let's talk about a little bit about how you got started with this. There's always a journey, right? So let's start yeah. with yours. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, my journey was I, you know, I was kind of on on the path to, uh, you know, I well actually I was a financial consultant for uh, a number of years, and and I really honestly. Honestly, I thought that that was going to be the end all be all where I was going to stay and retire and and uh, kind of following in my my father's footsteps. And, you know, and 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 that is like one of the things that, um, you know, so many people do, they they kind of end up on a unintentional path uh, because of maybe other, you know, conditioning and and ideas about, you know, what what they uh, what they thought as a as a child was going to be the thing that they were going to end up doing and you know for so for me once i actually started taking some uh, personal development and i started really tapping into the power of my mind and i realized oh boy i can i really i can do so much more i can do anything and like that already seemed like a lot to help people to change financially, but I wanted to ch help people to change on a much, much deeper level below the surface and, mm -hmm. you know, really help people to change their relationship with themselves, with others. And, you know, so that took me into, uh, you know, doing a lot of personal development on myself. And once I realized what was possible, I just wanted everyone uh, to be able to experience that. And, you know, it was a little difficult at first um, 
uh, because my uh, idea of how to how to do that was to drag everyone I knew into the same personal development courses and seminars and workshops that I was taking. And most people just didn't really see the de have the desire <laughs> to do that. So I came up with the idea on my own that I wanted to, um, you know, bring personal development into the comfort of everybody's home mm -hmm. where they could just kind of do it in their own, you know, private and they could get a taste of it. You know, the, the, I, I do, uh, I, I do host and deliver seminars these days. Um, so that is at the end of the, the tunnel, uh, or the, the alley for most people, but you know, this, this opens them up to get a taste of, right. of what it's all about. And, uh, and so I, I set out to, you know, create one of the largest, uh, personal development empires, um, with, uh, you know, my, over 500 hypnotherapy recordings and courses and books and and teachings and and all of that and it's you know it's been a an amazing journey and i've you know i just i i love what i do and i love inspiring people that's amazing and we all aspire to get to that point um, where we find what we were designed to do and we start living in it we start living in our truth Right. Because that's the goal. We want to find our purpose. We want to be able to use our talents. You know, just as you started in the financial industry, somebody told you it was going to be good money. Somebody probably said you might be good at this. So give it a shot. And that happens to a lot of us. You know, the same dream that we had as kids, aspirations, we don't as we get older, it gets tainted and then we move away from it. And then it takes another journey to get back to that. It so. absolutely does. Yeah. And, you know, that was one of the things that I learned uh, very, very early on, luckily, was, uh, you know, two ask two principles when it comes to money is one, you know, if you work for money, uh, you know, you're, you're constantly going to be chasing something that you think is outside of you. And, you know, so, you know, you, you've got to, I, I decided very early on that I wasn't going to work for money, uh, that I was going to work for, uh, you know, my, my purpose mm -hmm. and um, whether money came, uh, you know, whether it would be, I just trusted that enough money would be there to support me to do what I was put on this earth to do. And, and it has proven itself to be uh, accurate. And so we'll leave, we'll leave that at that. <laughs> yeah, very nice. And I'm sure you've had quite a bit of say into that, right? I like to think that we're creators. You know, we're not just, you're just victims. We create our reality, right? We have the power, the control, our, our in-depth brilliant mind has the control, the ability to bring us what we desire, what we're looking for. And so I know you are very big on law of attraction. Have you used some of that? And I know you just, you mentioned you do, how that has made the process easier for you. Absolutely. I mean, even before, before I became a hypnotherapist, a lot of the trainings, a lot of the books that I was reading, I was reading a lot of Deepak Chopra and Shakti Gawain and Wayne Dyer and Louise Hay. And, you know, all of these, these people were like my early, um, if you could say mentors, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just people that I was, I was following and I was in, interested in before. Before I became a hypnotherapist. And so my, uh, you know, my entry into, into being, becoming a hypnotherapy was law of attraction first mm -hmm. and, and hypnotherapy as a way to align my thinking and help me to retrain my brain to, uh, you know, think in the ways that would attract more of, of what I want, because, you know, here's the thing. I mean, with, when it comes to law of attraction, uh, so many people, they, they go into the, this idea thinking, oh, thoughts become things. And so all I have to do is, you know, sit down and meditate every day or, um, you know, do my affirmations every day or, um, put things on my vision board and watch my vision board. And, and, and as I do that, that my thoughts are going to become my reality. And it, then they find out after, you know, days, months, years of, of trying to do it that way, that it doesn't really work exactly that way. Um, that you, um, 
you know, your, your little um, affirmations and your vision board, uh, you know, is, is like, like fighting, uh, you know, an army of 50,000, you know, negative thoughts that are there that you're not even aware are there. Yep. Uh, and, and there, it's just, there's no way to, to, uh, contend with that. If, if you're not getting into the subconscious mind to rewire, uh, the, the, the brain and, and the thinking that's more just automatic and, and it's going to shoot down every single positive thought you could ever come up with until you deal with that. So I've always, come from, you know, it is about, um, the thoughts do become things, but there is, um, there's a little bit more of a journey to get to those, those things than people are immediately aware of. That subconscious mind, um, uh, you, you said a stat earlier, it's 60,000 thoughts a day, 90% Mm -hmm. of them are the same thoughts from yesterday and they're negative. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. And that's what, you know, that's what hypnosis and, um, you know, and these other tools, I mean, surely, you know, the vision, having, you know, a a vision board, having your affirmations, having a morning routine, meditating, working on aligning your thoughts is certainly uh, part of it. And it certainly helps keep you inspired. Um, But yeah, we have to have a way to develop the new thoughts in our subconscious mind. And and that's what hypnotherapy, uh, you know, helps us to dig in and and to be able to do. Yeah. Getting rid subconsciously go in there and get rid of deep rooted programming because we've been programmed. We are being programmed Mm -hmm. constantly. Exactly. So tell us about how that, that, what the process is like to someone who's considering this because they are doing all the things you mentioned, but they keep going back, defaulting back to their ways. So it really begins with, you know, getting in touch with what, you know, like, you know, we want to work on one desire at a time because, uh, you know, in that one desire, you know, there's, there's so many uh, conditions that we need to ultimately line up with. So, um, you know, thinking about, uh, you know, like, let's just say that it's about manifesting your soulmate, um, as an example. So say a person wants to manifest their soulmate, or they want to manifest, uh, you know, uh, more clients in their business. What we, what we want to do is we really want to sit down and, um, you know, get, uh, into, you know, kind of a deeply relaxed, uh, state and really like, like feel ourselves in possession of what it is that, uh, you know, that we're creating. That is one way that we're actually, uh, speaking to the subconscious just mind when we get our brains into that alpha or even the theta level of mind. Um, from there, ulti- then we, you know, we really want to like ask ourselves like to, to reveal from the subconscious mind, what is getting in my way of having what I want? What are some of the blocks that are there? What are some of the thoughts that are, are, that I am unaware of? Because here's the thing. We think we know what those thoughts are. We think we maybe know why we're not getting what we want, or sometimes, sometimes we don't know, or even think we know, but if, if, you know, if you've been you know, striving to align your thinking with a reality that it's just not happening. There is something deeper that you don't understand that you, that is sabotaging, that's blocking you from having that. So we go into hypnotherapy and we ask the question, we asked uh, the subconscious mind to reveal to us, what is the thought? Now it may come to you uh, the first time it may take a little bit of disciplined, um, you know, day after day going in, asking it to reveal to us. And it may reveal that to us in that moment. It, It may reveal it to us by helping us to expand our attention and our awareness on how we are going about our day and showing us, oh, these are the thoughts that have been, you know, have been getting in, in our way. And once we realize, you know, maybe, maybe these thoughts came from 
somebody in your life, somebody at a very early age telling you, you're never going to amount to anything. You're unlovable. No one would ever love you. You, you know, um, or, you know, or even not stated in necessarily a mean way, maybe they're just very well intentioned and they're just trying to protect you and saying, you know, you really should, uh, you know, become a doctor or a lawyer rather than doing the thing that you really want to want to do, becoming an artist. I find so many people that are creative people and, you know, but they're afraid to put themselves into any kind of, uh, you know, uh, creative position, um, you know, and, and really own that, like, I am becoming an artist and I'm going to make money doing what I love or, you know, whatever it is, they, you know, people get it twisted around that you can't make money doing something that's artistic or that that's fun or that you feel passionate about. You've got to do some thing that's, you know, going to pay the bills and, yeah. and, and that's so deeply ingrained because usually our well-intentioned parents are, saying something. And even here's the, here's the interesting thing too. They may not even say things, um, to you that, uh, that, that detours you from doing that. They just may give you, you know, unconscious messages, uh, because of their body language, because of the way that they look at you, when you tell them what it is that you want to do, they look at you like, mm, are you really sure about that? And, and, it could be your own made up story about what you think that they're thinking, which is even more powerful because it's your own thoughts that you're, you know, it's your own story. So we, we, have draw, to we draw those conclusions, especially we, at a young age. Yes, exactly. And so we have to get inside and, you know, and, and, and it's not coming from a place of, oh, well, like, you know, you never supported me. Um, it's about just simply getting the data, getting the information. And then once you have that information, so now you've got your list of the, the limiting beliefs that have been created, um, you know, by rooting these things out, asking the subconscious mind to reveal them. Now you've got a list of, of what you need to work on. And each one of these beliefs can be turned into um, an empowering belief instead, if you simply look for, you know, and you can usually find some kind of proof that proves these beliefs are completely BS and inaccurate. Um, and you can, you can ask yourself, is this, is this really true? Where did I get this information from? Um, who, you know, uh, who did I get this information from? Is the person that I got this information from really an authority on this matter? We get, mm -hmm. so we get information about, you know, how we're supposed to create money from people who don't have money. <laughs> and, um, you know, we get information from people uh, that say, oh, you know, you're, ne you're never going to meet your, your soulmate or all of those things that you want to have uh, in, a, in a soulmate uh, are completely unlikely to happen for you. We get that information from people who are not authorities in that area. And so much information gets stuck careful. in our subconscious mind that isn't even true. So we've got to like, go in and put those, um, uh, put those beliefs kind of on, you know, on interrogation and interrogate them and, and weaken those beliefs and then create new beliefs that we can now work on in hypnosis, uh, that, and, and see, see ourselves now at being able to achieve anything and anything is possible. If yeah. someone else can do something, then you can do it. Anything Absolutely. Yes. Possible. And it, we really have to be careful who we are listening to, because as you said, we have people who are not experts, but telling us, and it's only because they're telling us from their limited view. It's almost exactly. like having a dream, having a passion, and somebody says you can't do it, but God didn't give them that dream. God mm -hmm. didn't give them that passion. So they don't have the, the tools or resources to see it to fruition, but you do because it was given to you and you're trusting yourself enough to, um, to see it through, but also know that everything you need will come in a given divine time. And so, yeah, well. I agree with you. Do not listen. Be careful who you're who you're listening to because 
they're gonna tell you you can't but you should only be only listen to you and knowing that you have everything inside so you mentioned money um earlier and i have a question around that how is it possible to use hypnosis to convince people out of poverty oh yes that is a great question i think that um ultimately it just comes down to uh you know one of the things that i i strongly believe in is is models and and seeing how like you know, some of the great people um, like Tony Robbins and, and the late Bob Proctor and, uh, you know, and, and just Oprah Winfrey and, you know, all of these people who ultimately they convinced themselves they came from total poverty and they became billionaires or, yeah. you know, maybe, I don't know if Tony Robbins is a billionaire or Bob Proctor, but multi-millionaires. Yeah. And so I think, um, one of the ways that you can convince the subconscious mind quickly and easily is by reading stories and these stories become metaphors that you can use in your own subconscious mind. Um, literally reading those stories and then you can use hypnosis to, uh, you know, kind of see yourself as the, you know, as the person who was once in poverty and, and move yourself into a place, into that awareness of what it would be like, what your life is like now that you have already uh, been able to create that, that prosperity in your life. Um, so those are really actually two things, you know, having the models that you can use just to convince yourself that it is possible. Um, but then also, you know, just through the power of um, visualization in hypnosis, using visualization to put yourself into the reality of what it's like, because here's the cool thing about visualization, the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's imagined. And so the imagination is so, so powerful. And the imagination gets misused far more often than it, than it gets used for good purposes. Um, you know, we imagine the worst. We, uh, you know, when the bill comes and we don't feel like we have enough money to pay it, you know, we start imagining the lights you know, going off or, or we start, you know, imagining, um, you know, just bad things happening. And so instead of imagining the worst, we want to start to uh, turn those visions around and, and imagine what, you know, life could really be like, and allow ourselves to tap into the inner wisdom and the inner guidance that has the answers for us to, you know, help us take those inspired actions toward creating more uh, prosperity and abundance. We all have the ability to tap into this uh, infinite intelligence, this universal intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, everyone has access to that. I mean, where did the great you know, the great artists and the great inventors of our time, Einstein and Bach and Beethoven and, and the Wright brothers and, you know, where did they get that, you know, that information? I mean, it, yeah. it came from someplace. It came yeah. from, from, from source, but they had to take action on it. You know, yeah. they had to like, they had to trust that, that, you know, if you take the first step, the rest of the steps will be uh, shown to you. Yes. Well said. If you take the first step and everything else will show up. Trust that process. Yeah. Visualization is big. It's key. And I'm sure the, all the greats that you've mentioned uh, activate that takes in that taking that visualization process and imagining the work completed, imagining the masterpiece, imagining them doing it. I know that people who run marathons, there was a study where they, they visualize the finish line and they didn't train as hard, but compared to um, group A who did the training without the visualization and they outperformed the group who did train without visualization. Athletes are doing this, okay? They're visualizing their game, their winning shot, all this stuff and, and it's manifesting. So the, our brilliant mind loves imagery, loves words. And so we have to feed it, right? You agree? 
Oh, I absolutely agree. And I, I use that in my own ability. I've, I've run three marathons and five half marathons, and I absolutely can attest to the power of words and the power of imagery. Um, one of the things that I do when, when I run and, you know, and, and the thing is, is you want to be very proactive in this when you're doing it. Like you don't want to wait until you're starting to feel like out of energy um, because then, you know, it's a little hard to ca catch up. You got to keep feeling that energy along the way. And so I, I just use the statement. I am energy. I am energy. I am energy. I am energy. I just, you know, and so when you feel like you are energy, how can you possibly run out of energy? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and the other thing, the vision that I love to use, and this just feeds me is I imagine like all the the objects around me, like the trees and the cars and, you know, every, everything that I'm seeing around me, I like turn all of that into like this big crowd. And I'm the only one that's running through <laughs> this crowd and they're just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, you know, they're cheering me on and, you know, just using that kind of imagery, it just does something. It just sends you that much more you just imagine those people are just sending all their energy and their good feelings toward you and you're just doing it and you can use that you know i mean that's just uh you mentioned athletics but i mean you can really use that in anything and yeah. you know imagine that the you know the whole world is for you is really working with you uh you know because sometimes a lot of times we can really feel like oh their whole world's against us but if we turn that around and we just master our thoughts and master our, our feelings and, and master our actions. And, uh, you know, we can turn all of that old outdated, you know, thinking around and, and turn it into something that's helping us rather than hindering us. Yeah. Same thing with gratitude. The more you do it, the more you find things to be grateful for, the more you're attracting, um, beautiful things and to be, um, to be thankful and grateful and then you just start feeling amazing and that energy just follows you all, all all around so let's chime let's let's get into your morning routine how do you get up dress up and show up yes absolutely so i was thinking about this because you know i have two versions of my morning routine i've got um the ideal version um which is a four hour uh, morning routine and i am quite fortunate that because i work from home and mm -hmm. i don't have a set schedule that you know i get to do this so you can kind of pick and choose from all of the things uh that i that i do so i wake up five o'clock and um, I give myself between five and five fifteen to um, turn on the cup, you know, to make a cup of coffee, <laughs> and uh, and drink down, you know, a cool full cool glass of water. And I just kind of, you know, go around the house and, you know, I'm on my meditation pillow by five fifteen um, while the coffee's brewing in the background and all of that because I love my I love my coffee and it is part of my morning routine. Mm -hmm. So I meditate from uh, 5.15 um, for about a half an hour. Um, and the meditation that I do is just a silent Vipassana meditation where I'm just completely, um, you know, really clearing my mind over and over and over again. Uh, the, the clearing of the mind to me is, is the most non-negotiable part of this <laughs> because the, um, what you do during that time is you, your thoughts, you're never going to stop thinking, you know, thoughts are going to come, they're going to flow to you. And, and it's really easy to like, start going down and, and start thinking these, these, these thoughts and, and allowing them to just be the thing that you're doing. And you're not there to think these thoughts, you're there just to observe everything that is going on. Uh, you're observing your breathing, observing uh, your, your energy, observing those thoughts, but letting them go mm -hmm. and, uh, and letting go of them. And this, this whole letting go process, letting go of our thoughts to me, you know, that is, it's akin to like, just getting control over your life. And when you have control over your thinking and you can let things go and, and not necessarily have to participate in every single thought that we think, um, that is, 
like to me, one of the most self-empowering things you can do. So it really starts with that. Um, the next part of that is now my mind is open and it's ready to receive um, positive empowering suggestions through hypnosis. So part two is I get, uh, I go over to my, I have my meditation chair and then I have my um, hypnosis lounge. And so I'll go over to my hypnosis lounge and I will do my uh, self-empowering hypnosis and um, turn on my hypno cloud and, um, and just allow myself to receive the beneficial uh, suggestions in hypnosis. Um, from there, uh, then now I have kind of woken up enough to journal. And so I'll, I'll start journaling. Um, the journaling that I do is either on my vision um, and I'll, I'll just write about, you know, what I'm creating for today, what I'm creating for my life in general. And, um, and then if I have time, I will read. Uh, so, so these are the, um, the four in my meditation room. Once I um, am done with all that, then I'm allowed to um, have my coffee. Um, and then I will uh, go out for a walk or a run. And then the, you know, finally, it's just getting myself dressed and ready makeup on and all of that hair, makeup, clothes. Uh, because when you look good, you feel good and you're confident and you just have just you know, you're ready. And, yeah. um, you know, a lot of times, you know, like people will <laughs> ask me to like, Oh, let's just have a quick zoom meeting. And I don't want to be sitting there in the you know middle of, uh, the, the morning or the middle of my day and, and worrying about that, you know, so mm -hmm. I'm already ready to go. And so that whole routine is from five to, uh, to 9.00 AM. Um, I'm dressed and ready. I've done all of that in the last four hours of my life and nine o'clock. Yeah. You, you, you get up a little earlier to make that happen because you know, the importance of it, because that's you time that how else are you exactly. going to show up? You know, we used to think morning routine was just about the makeup and the getting dressed and the hair. That's the physical aspect of it. But what you are able to do is kind of prime your mind for the exactly. day. Exactly. And that priming the mind to me is just like, I mean, that's so, so important. Like now I can think straight. Now I um, am, you know, really, really focused on my, my goals for the day. And, um, and I just, I'm just going to be much more clear and, and get, get more things accomplished. Nice. I love that you shared it and you incorporate um, movement, running, walking after that, because you got to do the, both the physical, get the body moving and the mental because it's the muscles you want to keep strengthening. So that's Absolutely. really, really nice you shared. Um, tell us, how can we contact you? How can we get, get in touch with you? Sure. Um, so my website is victoriamgallagher.com and uh, that'll lead to all the things there. Um, I also want to encourage people to, uh, they can also reach out to me through my HypnoCloud app, meaning they can uh, download the app, get uh, 12 free sessions in the app. These are the sessions that are going to help you to um, master your day and master your life. Um, and so when you get the hypno cloud app, um, you know, you've got those 12 free sessions, you can sign up and you'll receive all kinds of other, uh, gifts and, and announcements and opportunities. So fantastic. Thank you for sharing ladies and gentlemen, this has been Victoria and it's been amazing talking about the mind, the subconscious mind and how you can get up, dress up and show up in style but also preparing your mindset so you can be better for your clients better for your family so it's been an honor thank you so much victoria for coming on today thank you so much it's been my privilege excellent hope you enjoyed today's episode please comment and tell us what was your favorite part your favorite habit that you are going to try out for yourself today comment below if you haven't already be sure to subscribe until next time, I will see you at the top of your best morning routine ever. Stay blessed.